Every culture has a sword. Uh, there are different schools of thought on how to use the sword, different reasons for using the sword, some forms of meditation. The Japanese style of swordsmanship, for the most part, is called Iaido. I A I D O. Okay, Iaido, way of the way. Okay, and there are very many different schools, okay, including uh, Nito Ru, which is like an alleged style developed by Musashi, which is two swords. But if you go through the chronology and you follow the timelines of history, you'll find that Musashi was around at the same time the uh, Europeans were coming in with their rapiers and their daggers. Now, I'm not suggesting that Musashi didn't create his own thing, but the reality of it is, is when you're fighting 10 and 12 guys, which he did, according to certain folklore, you can't just handle one sword, you gotta have two swords. So anyway, the Europeans, they're working with the rapier and they have that dagger there to like make a block and maybe make a stab. So the Japanese have the katana, which is the long sword, and a wakazachi, which is a shorter sword that we're not going to work with, that we're not going to show at this point. There were many different schools, many different sword masters. Musashi happens to be considered the sword saint, which is based on a lot of fiction, and there's a lot of good non-fiction involved with that as well. He, he fought over 60 battles, won every one of them, uh, slayed all of his opponents, and went into the cave. But we're not going to talk about Musashi today. Okay? What we're going to talk about is the proper method, and this is called a bokeh, it's a wooden sword. Okay? What I'm going to teach you today is up to and including the first kata from a standing position the Muso Shinden school. Muso Shinden is the Muso school, okay, and the first kata they do is called Mai, which means forward. Okay. And there are very simple applications here. The first thing you're going to have to learn to do is to hold the sword properly. Okay. We're not going to go into the ritual of like bowing in and doing all of the uh, rituals. We're going to work primarily on getting the sword under control, which you're going to be able to do. Hold the sword properly. You use the pinky, the same way when we're working with the stick. The pinky and the ring finger, the pinky and the ring finger. This controls it, okay? And this guides it and reinforces it. What you're going to do in order to grab this properly is just very simply from here, okay? From here, just pick it up right out from your belly button, if you will, okay? That's called the hara, H-A-R-A, it's the center of the uh, energy, okay? And just grab it in like fashion and hold it. I don't want you to squeeze it, I don't want you to like try to manipulate it, I just want you to hold it. I want you to feel the wood, I want you to feel the energy that every device has, okay? So I'm going to make all the corrections that have to be made, okay? So now hold it in your left hand the way I showed you, and we're going to bring it up, and we're going to do it simultaneously. Okay. This is my bogey. It's like ironwood, you know, okay? okay? All I want you to do is just pick it up from your center, grab it, feel comfortable with it, and just hold it. Just hold it. Okay. Squeeze it with your pinky and your ring, both pinkies and ring fingers. Squeeze the handle, okay? All right. All right. And this, you'll see that your hands go a little bit like so. Okay, can you see that? Where the hands are like, squeeze, like wringing it out, wringing it out. The reason you use a wringing out technique is to control the transit of the blade. Okay, here's what happens when you don't use the wringing technique. Okay? Boom, it's going to flop around. Boom, it's going to bounce. When I apply pressure with my pinky and my ring finger, wham, it stops. Wham, where I want it to stop. So the first thing you've got to do is learn how to make a cut. Okay, we're going to talk about the overhead cut. I'm not using Japanese at all in this particular situation. I may drop a word here and there, but it's really not that required at this particular point. 
okay, from my view, all right? All right. Just gonna hold that sword. Tell me you're comfortable with it. Okay. Now watch what I do. I'm gonna practice cutting. What I do is I don't bring it over here and I don't just swing it wildly. Like chopping or slashing or slicing or anything. I want to make a cut. And the reason I want to make a cut is because if I'm controlling the blade and I'm letting the sword do what it's got to do, the blade knows what it is supposed to do. Okay, and that's maybe high end philosophy, but I'm not really interested in what other people think. I'm just telling you what I know. Okay? All right, so when I hold this, I got my thumb around it, and notice I have like about a finger's width between my two hands here. Okay? That enables me to be more pliable, more directional. Okay? If I lock it up like this, you know, I'm too tight. I'm too tight. I want you to be loose. I want you to hold it firmly and be pliable at the same time. So just bringing it up straight up. Notice my arms. I'm not going like this. My arms are coming straight up. Now notice the trajectory. Notice the trajectory. Notice the trajectory of the tip. It's not like going like this. It's just going straight up in an arc and stopping here. Now, why is it stopping here? This gives you the maximum amount of effect with a cut. If you go here, you got like that much extra and you're not really controlling it. You're going to end up chopping and slashing. Okay, So from here, right up over this way. Now how do you know you have it correct? Because when you're looking straight ahead, you see the butt, the butt end of the sword. Okay? Got that? Yep. Okay. When you see more, like you see your hands, you're not holding it correctly. Even if you have, even if you're in this position. So we want to see the butt and you want to just bring it up like this. Notice there's an angle there. It's almost like a 45 degree angle for me. Okay? What this does it gives me here, and I've got all the torque. All the torque that I have to develop is already in my arms. Because my arms are not here, they're not here, they're here. And the standard of measurement is that the arm, the elbow, is on the same level as the ear. Okay? So, for example, when I cut, I bring it up, my elbows up on my ear, you know, the same height as my ears, and I see the butt of the sword. Okay, so we're going to very slowly start to bring the sword into play. But when we make the cut, we're going to do it this way. From here, we're going to bring it up, and when I make the cut, I'm going to reach out like I'm fishing, like I'm casting out a fishing line. And that gives me the extra reach I need, and gives me the arc, and I can pull it right to here, where I originally started with it, about an inch or so below my belly button, that's the horror, okay? And there, and when I make the cut, I'm gonna go this way. Bend my knees. Bending my knees for balance, not bending my knees for more force, all right? And remembering that when I finish the cut, which is at the same level as this, wham, I ring it, okay? This particular aspect of holding the sword is essential in every aspect of sword play. Okay? Even in European sword play, they, they have this sort of a technique. Let's not forget we're doing this, whereas the Europeans are fencing and doing this, but they're still controlling it. All right? So very slowly, I want you to just bring it up and bring your elbows back a little bit. Okay, and as you're coming down, reach all the way out and bend your knees. So you're doing that. This is just this particular thing where we're making a down cut. Go ahead. Okay, keep your shoulders back. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, you hear the wind breaking <laughs> from, from the cut? Okay. That means you're cutting properly. If you don't hear that, you're not cutting properly. It's as simple as that. 
Okay? So anytime you're practicing and you're swinging and doing everything you're doing and you don't hear anything, you're not cutting properly. So if you're cutting properly, it's like... Understand? Okay. Now, you're going to feel it from here up until it gets used to the idea of applying that kind of a pressure on the, on the cut. So when you're coming down, it's just ring it. Okay? Try that. Go ahead. Okay, don't lean in. That's right. Hold it up here. Okay? You comfortable with it? Go. Okay, don't bend over. Okay, don't do this. Don't do this. Do this. Not this. Don't bend in and don't bend back. Okay, go ahead. That's right. Breathe. That's it. Go ahead. You know it's a 45 degree angle without looking because you're coming up and your arms are by your ears. Uh, you know, the elbows. That's the 45 degree angle. Give or take a degree or three. Go ahead. Don't bend over. That's it. Just reach out with it. No. Remember when you're coming down. Wham! Lock it. Ah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Step up a bit. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, you see what you just did? Okay, you were doing what you were doing, and all of a sudden, before you made the cut, you psyched, so, so, well, I guess you sent the message to your head, no, that's not right, let's get it right. So the sword will guide you. Now, I am the firm believer that the sword have a, has a life of its own. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not talking about some crap that they knock off for, for 598, you know, the souvenirs, you know. The sword has a life of its own. Okay? I want you to know that every time you make a cut, that's the last cut you're ever going to have to execute on a target. This is a significant thing. This is why the rings is important. But you'll get around to reading the rings when you get around to reading the rings. Pete Manish can tell you, so I'm not going to hock you with this one, okay? All right, let's go. Good. You comfortable with it? Almost. Okay, good. Considering you what? You've done it like 50 times in your entire lifetime. Here, go ahead. Now, if you keep this in mind, when you use the shillelagh, you, you bust your whatever the guys, you're gonna bust them up, okay? Because now you're not just swinging the shillelagh, but boom, boom, laying shots. Big difference. That's what I'm saying, it's all the same thing. Basically the same thing. It, it's not basically the same thing. Exactly the same. It's exactly the same thing. A little variation in style, okay? But that's all, okay? And that's why, I look at Iaido as a very fine meditative form. Because, for example, when I'm not working the sword, say I'm working Sai, okay, or say I'm working uh, my or, or a cane or whatever it is I'm working, it's always the same. Okay, once you're going to get to this point where you're here, and we did this with the uh, Shuele also, where a guy starts to come at you, and what do you do? You just go, boom. And then, Whack, like a baseball bat. Now, there are cuts in Iaido that emulate a baseball bat. Because you ever see the baseball players, what they do? They step in. Okay. Now, as you're doing this, as you're doing this, don't get killed. Hold this correctly. Get the 45 angle. Okay, you just see the, the bottom, right? Yeah. Don't move. Just watch. Ooh. 
Watch where I'm at. Watch my feet. I think the camera can probably pick it up. What I'm doing is I'm going in. Okay? And I'm coming back. Then with my other foot. Going in. Coming back. Not boom, boom. We're not into that yet. All we're doing now is just getting foom, foom. And notice the synchronization. When I'm back here, this is here. When I'm out here, I've made the cut. When I'm bringing it back up, my foot comes back into place. It's essential that you maintain the rhythmic structure of this. If you don't, you're going to be off balance. Okay? You're also going to find out that because you're maintaining this rhythm, okay, you're not going to do this. Whoa. You're not going to like uh, trip. You're just going to go like your normal walk in the park. I'm there, right? I come back. Boom. I come back. Got it? Here we go. So it's not the straight overhead. It's a little bit on the side what you did. I want you to do it straight overhead. The reason I did it on the side, okay, is because that's the way I cut. Because it's much easier to cut here and slice them in half than it is to cleave his head in two. That's a personal, that's a personal choice. In the classical form, when you're doing the actual exercise, the kata, you'll be making that cut. So just get used to making the straight ahead, right down to cleaving his head in half. Okay, step in slowly. Up, okay. Okay, when the foot is out and the sword is here, it's the same time. It's not this, not this. Cut and step, or step and cut, okay? It's simultaneous. Bang, got it? Go. Don't lean in. That's it, but reach out. Reach out with that. And get the, get the arms up properly. Get the, other, get the 45 degree angle. When you're practicing at home with the mirror, you'll see what I'm talking about. Because you'll stand sideways. Oh, that's not correct. It's got to be up, okay? Not a problem. Go. Okay, I don't want you to swing hard. I don't want you to swing fast. I want you to swing. You feel it. Feel it? You're going to cut, cut somebody with a sword. You're going to take them off the planet. Right. Feel it. Feel it. Okay? See, this is not for kids, man. Yeah, you can start a kid when he's five or six years old, and like your little girl that does those cottages that you saw on YouTube and things like that. This is a way of being. This mentality permeates everything I do. It permeates my writing, it permeates my social uh, skills. Depends who you're with, man. <laughs> okay, but you understand? So it's not a question of like, there's no time in the action to make stupid moves. And that carries over, and this keeps you clean, psychically and emotionally, whatever you want to call it. That when somebody asks you a question, you straight count. Straight count, okay? You haven't got time to bullshit. You haven't got time to bullshit because, like, in a combat situation, hi, I'm really going to get you, you're dead. Because you're trying to impress the guy. You never want the enemy to know you're coming. Or the target, in this instance. You want the target to know you've been there. Now, we spoke about this in other things, right? Okay, here we go. Step in. All right. Get cool with it. Get smooth. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good. Remember the 45 degree angle. Go ahead. Very good. Very good. Go ahead. There you go. Nicely, nicely. The sword out of the scabbard. Okay, now you're not working with a live blade, you're working with a practice sword here. Now before you start to practice with a live blade, which is essentially a four foot razor blade, okay, 
you want to make sure you have the mechanics down so you don't weave your fingers on the floor. Okay, not because of of the injury to you, but because of the mess that somebody's got to clean up. Ho, ho, there you go, okay. So for example, here I am. And the first thing I'm going to do, because the samurai carries a sword on his hip like so, a wider, right? Okay, always with the katana with the blade up. The blade up, okay? And what's happening because the blade is up, it gives me a, a trajectory that enables me to cut. If I'm on a horse, for example, the blade is down, and that's called a tachi. So the cut is then brought out like, boom, or you swing it up like this. But here what you're doing is you just, and we'll, I'll define how this is done. You're just bringing the sword out and cutting across. Cutting across, all right? All right, now the scabbard has got to be kept in mind that when you're pulling the scabbard, pulling the, sword, pulling the scabbard off of the sword, never pull the sword from the scabbard. What you're doing is just opening yourself up. Notice how I'm turning here, I'm opening up. Okay, if I do it this way, look how many inches I just lost. Here, what, six inches? Which is not chopped liver in combat, okay? So from here, just hold the, hold, hold the sword, okay, a little bit down, like as if it's got the scabbard there, so you can hold it like here. Okay, and you're comfortable with it, right? Okay. Now, in the pure form, the reason they pulled the sword, they wore two swords, but there was a reason for them to pull the sword out with a certain maneuver, okay? If you have two swords, let me have this, like this, and this is your short sword, and this is your long sword, okay? You can't grab it. So both, both swords on the same side. Yeah, yeah. So what you would do is you would come up like this. Come up like this. And you lock it. Now, as you're making the cut, right, stand here a little bit. As you're making the cut, I'm coming up. Watch me, and my feet are starting to move, and I'm pushing out, right, with the butt end of this to go into your face, pulling the scabbard off, twisting my body, coming across your throat, like so. I don't go here, I don't go here, I don't go here. In other words, I'm just coming here. All right, right across your eyes, across your throat. If in case I miss and I went all the way this way, you can eat me up. But if in fact I miss and I stop here, you're going to eat my sword for lunch. Follow? And all of these things are very, very significant. They're very important. Okay? Every little move you make with an aesthetic art form, and Iido is an aesthetic art form, here is just See that whole thing? Okay, why this hand is coming back here is this is to get the scabbard out of the way. Okay, so what's happening here is you are not going to do this. You're going to very smoothly, and this, this is the beauty of the item or any of these aesthetic arts. It's just like, I'm right here. And this sets me up to do this. But that's the second part. I'm just going to do it naturally.